Hello everyone. We talk a lot about getting out of your comfort zone in aquascaping and how important that is to challenge yourself. Um, I've done a lot of that in the past year. That was a bad idea. So today I'm back with what I do best, simply ragumi in a 60p. I've been thinking a lot what to do today and um, I decided to go with a full minimalistic Iwagumi and with Frodo stones. The reason behind is that I've done a lot of minimal Iwagumis, you've seen it over the years. But with Frodo stone I usually build my bigger tanks like the 120Ps which are more complicated Iwagumi setups. So never had this combination before. We're gonna do it today and I'm probably gonna go mono species on the plants but actually I'm not sure yet. We're gonna figure out once we see the hardscape itself. So, I'm gonna start with ADA Power Send Advance. This is the M size. We usually go with the S for the 60P, but we have this open. Someone mixed this with Amazonia. Doesn't really matter, should be fine. Substrate goes on the bottom. I try to keep edges clean so we don't see the two layers. After the power send, we go ADA Amazonia. We fill from the edges. As I said, it's gonna be simple Iwagumi, so I have three pieces of stone. That's it, maybe I add some little ones. I have the usual question in my head, who's gonna move this to its place? It's gonna be tricky. I think the most difficult part of building an Iwagumi, especially a simple one, is like a minimalistic one with small quantities of stones, is finding the perfectly matching stones. So they should match in texture, they should match in color. It takes some well, practice or experience to know which uh, stones will have different colors underwater. It's fine to combine them in a big tank where you have lots of stones, uh, but in a small setup like this, uh, if I would put in a brownie stone uh, on this side, they would clash in colors, so I wouldn't recommend it. This is gonna be the one, but uh, I need to raise the soil. Some people can build very naturally with, uh, with wood really quickly and uh, without too much thought. For me, that's, that's the more difficult side. I can work really easily and really well with rocks. It's not gonna stand, I need something underneath. Iwagumi can be very easy once you understand the requirements for it to look natural. Like I mentioned, the matching colors and, uh, and matching textures. Once you comprehend that, I think it's easy for anyone to build a nice Iwagumi. So, hardscape is done. Where is my sprayer? Here we are at the planting stage. Um, I've decided to go with Hamiantus Cuba. If you follow us on all or any of our social media platforms, uh, you might have seen that we have a new brand for plants, a new nursery, which is uh, Stoffels. I'm gonna try their plants today because actually I haven't used it before. You can see that they call the Cuba differently. Now it's not Hemianthus, it's Micranthemum, like the Monte Carlo. This happens with plants quite often. They somehow figure out that they are a different species that they thought so at 
they change the name. So plan names change from time to time. That's normal. We get used to it. This is the same what we used to call Hamiantus Cuba and we haven't used for quite some time. I don't really know why. Uh, so it's time to take it back and it's one of the finest carpeting plants for Imagumi layouts because it has very 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 small leaves. I'm sure that I'm gonna use it in the front half of the tank. I'm not yet sure if I'm gonna use it in the back as well but we'll see as we progress. Whenever you plant Cuba there are two things that you should make sure of. First the water temperature. While the carpet is growing Cuba tends to do best um, if you have the water temperature around 21, 22 degrees Celsius, which is quite low. Uh, so we usually recommend using this plant in the spring or in the autumn, unless you have a very good air conditioning system. The second thing, and it's a small trick, high levels of CO2 on the carpet. Now, what you can do after setting up your tank and before adding any livestock to it is putting the drop checker down right above the carpet and check the CO2 levels there and you can actually overdose the CO2 because you don't have any animals inside that you would kill with high levels of CO2. Now this should give you enough time to grow an almost complete carpet or at least get the Cuba starting to grow its root system. Of course, when you add the fish, you should turn down the CO2 and put back the drop checker to the upper third of the tank as we usually use it. After that, Cuba can survive higher temperatures. So once it's developed into a full carpet, it's fine up to about 24, 25 degrees Celsius as most plants. And of course it can uh, survive one week heat wave during the summer when um, times go even higher but you're definitely going to see leaves turning yellow and the plants starting to go out if you can't make sure that you have the temperatures in the water that i've just mentioned but you still want sort of similar looks then monte carlo is the next best thing it looks very very similar to cuba the main difference is the leaf size. The Monte Carlo has bigger leaves. And I think that's why most people use Monte Carlo uh, over Cuba. It's much easier to keep alive uh, in the beginning. Later on, what you have to make sure with Cuba is trimming regularly. It grows the same way as Monte Carlo does. So it, it grows on each other. It overlaps itself. Obviously because of this, it can get quite thick. So. When your carpet gets too thick, then um, it tends to simply float up because it has very, very small roots. Once the carpet is too thick, light doesn't go deep down and the roots start basically rotting without light. Also, even if it doesn't float up, it can get quite yellow on the bottom, so it's not too nice. You can still save it at that time, but after trimming, you're gonna see the yellow leaves, which is not too nice. I'm done. As you can see, I went with the monospecies setup. During the build, I was thinking about having grass in the back, like some kind of araucaris. I thought about the short ones, the long ones, uh, but then just decided to go full Cuba on the whole uh, setup. So, it's got 10 pots in it in total. If you do it at home, you're fine with a bit less, but we want uh, a carpet as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, that's it. We're gonna put it in place. No idea how, because it's very, very heavy, especially this one, and at least it's stable. So yeah, it should be fine. We're gonna start running it. In a couple of weeks time, we're gonna put in the fish, which now this is a special moment. I know up front what fish I'm gonna use and it's uh, actually the Sundadanio axarodi, which is a very, very nice fish, usually not available, at least not in Hungary, but uh, we managed to get some, so they're already getting prepared for this tank. Obviously, we're not gonna put them in right now, just a, two or three weeks later, and thanks for joining me. See you next time. Goodbye.